Hi, my name is Ryan. Today I'd like to talk about a game called The Logging, and how the specific historical period that it is released into has altered the way in which players might engage with it. Instead of playing the game on its own terms, it takes on special meaning as a reflection of our own lives during the COVID-19 pandemic. For this I need to clarify two things. First I need to talk about the different ways we can look at games and games as played texts. Secondly, I need to dive into the hermeneutical philosophy of Hans George Gadamer. I promise it's simpler than it sounds. Kind of. So there are many ways to look at games. We can talk about how they look or sound, what they feel like to move around. We can deep dive into their code to see how things are arranged. We can take a look at features and difficulty curves. These approaches all focus on the game as an object. They remove the player from any consideration. However, no matter how linear or open-ended a game is, there is always a configurative and interpretational role to play by the player. By that I mean that we as players fill in the blanks, whether that's completing an objective or how we choose to interpret our actions within the game world. This process, most commonly known as play, necessarily creates a unique game text every time. There's a new story told every time a team walks out on the football pitch. The enduring appeal of the beautiful game is the new narrative woven into each match. We watch football to see how it's played, to see how players move through the space and appropriate the rules and constraints placed on them. So we meet games in the middle. We bring our experiences and cultural background into our play, and we fill in the gaps. This can manifest in countless ways. For example, being from Ireland, I'm not exactly familiar with the African mythology represented in Orion, Legacy of the Koryodan. It might not change how I functionally play the game, but it might alter how I can representationally fill in the gaps. In a different way, we can look at how people might experience Gree. It's a gorgeous game about the pain of loss, but its subject matter is left rather abstract, leaving it up to players how they read into it. Who we are influences how we play, and thus influences the result of the game text. But it's not just who we are, but when we are. We are complex beings, influenced by the environment, politics and people around us, and so the times we live in have an effect on our being and our creative output. Whilst the pandemic might not last years or constitute a generation of human time, it is certainly an epoch-defining event, with its events most likely being felt for years to come. It has constrained the human race to their homes and dictated social distancing. So it is an extraordinary coincidence that a game about waiting would release just as the pandemic hits. The Longing is a fascinating game from German developer Studio Seufz. In it, the player character is in a cave. A character called the King informs them that they are going to sleep for 400 days to regain their power. It is up to the player to wait for them. At the top of the screen is a timer that counts down from 400 days in real time. What follows is the player exploring the cave system as the King sleeps. Players can decorate their home with pictures, crystals and books to make time go faster when they're in it. If the player exits the game, the timer will continue to run down. But it is still a large amount of time to wait. By itself this is a fascinating concept, and beyond that the game explores ideas of loneliness and existential angst. But the character of the Shade is one separate from the player. The Shade has their own story and dreams. However, releasing this game during the COVID-19 pandemic changed the context in which players engage with the game. It now holds a mirror up to the player to show them how their life reflects that of the Shade. Being confined to the cave, instructed not to leave it, decorating the home, finding books to keep yourself occupied, hoping the time passes quicker, yearning for someone else to talk to. The life of the Shade in the Longing reflects that of ourselves under lockdown in this pandemic. In my own play of the Longing, this game is so dark I have to close the curtains just to see anything in the game. I am creating my own cave to live in. Playing the Longing during this pandemic inevitably creates a text that reflects our lived experience right now. It's not the only game where our attitudes are shaped by the surrounding crisis. The setting of the Resident Evil 3 remake, a game also released during the pandemic, though extreme, shows the effect of a pandemic on human society. Even Death Stranding, which released last year, becomes much more prescient under the gaze of the pandemic, humanity isolated with delivery workers being the thread that connects everyone. So a game in development for four years, released in the middle of a pandemic, and in playing it, creates a game text that reflects our own experiences during this ongoing crisis. That is significant in and of itself. But when we look at this through the lens of the work of Hans George Gadmer, it gets a little more interesting. Now it is far beyond the remit of this humble video to present Gadamer's research in any holistic way, but I want to look specifically at the concept of horizons. For this it's worth reading out a passage from his book, Truth and Method. In the sphere of historical understanding too, we speak of horizons. 
especially when referring to the claim of historical consciousness to see the past in its own terms, not in terms of our contemporary criteria and prejudices, but within its own historical horizon. The task of historical understanding also involves acquiring an appropriate historical horizon, so that what we are trying to understand can be seen in its true dimensions. If we fail to transpose ourselves into the historical horizon from which the traditionary text speaks, we will misunderstand the significance of what it has to say to us. To that extent, this seems a legitimate hermeneutical requirement. We must place ourselves in the other situation in order to understand it. Here, Gadamer is interested in how we understand texts from a time gone by. How do we appreciate the drama of Pride and Prejudice without understanding certain aspects of Regency society in late 18th and early 19th century England? To have a horizon in this interpretational sense is to have a vantage point to look upon the text. To transpose oneself into an historical horizon is essentially trying to place yourself on a vantage point where you can survey the historical text without any misunderstanding. This is an interesting question in relation to games anyway. Have you ever tried playing a game from 20 years ago or more? The mechanisms of game design and genres have moved on so far that we might find certain conventions antiquated. This idea is more in relation to Hans Robert Yaus's Horizon of Expectation, which addresses how the texts we have consumed inform our expectations from certain genres. It places the onus of understanding on the technological era of the game object itself. However, what I'm interested in here is in the era lived in by the player who creates the game text. There is a game text being created at this very moment in the middle of this pandemic by someone playing The Longing that cannot be recreated by those that come after us. This is true in any regular circumstance or era, but the extraordinary situation and the coincidence of this game being released during the pandemic coalesce into something that is truly one in a million. A game text that reflects the lived experience of the player at that moment during a global crisis not seen in a century. In 30 years time, a person not even born yet could sit down and start playing The Longing. They'll create a unique game text given their experiences, surroundings and technological familiarity. But if they were to try and create a game text like what is being created right now, they might have difficulty transposing themselves to that horizon of understanding, of that lived experience. In times yet to come, will there be a loss of understanding at the game text we create today?